explain to you what you're doing. So we are opening the International Space Station to uh, commercial and marketing opportunities. We're also opening it for private astronauts on U.S. vehicles uh, to go to the space station. All this unleashes uh, American innovation. Uh, the commercial companies that are here are very excited about it. We've already seen uh, some deals get done to start to lock up those seats. Uh, and it's really a driving force of not only the American economy, but it lowers the cost of taxpayers, which uh, we can then use more resources to go uh, for the Artemis program, go back to the moon with the first man and the next woman, uh, and go on to Mars after that. So who do you expect is going to use it? You say you've been talking to some companies already. Who's mm -hmm. expressing interest? What sorts of things? Private research. So you have pharmaceutical companies that in no gravity can mix um, better, better uh, pharmaceuticals. There are um, other uses for creating uh, retinas, artificial retinas that at the, thin, at the thin levels they do on Earth, they collapse in on themselves, but in no gravity you can create these retinas that can, I mean, they, they, they say it could open up the opportunity for some, uh, in some cases, blind people to be able to see again. Uh, that, those are no gravity uses of manufacturing. Um, you also have um, fiber optic cabling that can be produced at a much, much better quality than it can in a gravity environment. So there are a lot of over 50 companies right now already do research on the space station. And this allows that research to now go into a profit-making venture, uh, which again, uh, the, the way I, uh, I've been saying it here at the NASDAQ market site, which we think is the perfect place to announce uh, an opportunity like this for the American economy, uh, is that if there was a space ETF, I think it would be up drastically today. <laughs> a lot of flows into the space ETF. Uh, it sounds like it's gonna get pretty crowded up there. Do you have that much room? I mean, how do you limit it so that it doesn't interfere with other activities that you need to do? Yeah, we do. In fact, so the two companies right now that, were, that, that can sell the seats, the ride, to get up to the space station, uh, Boeing and SpaceX, both have extra seats available right now. So the cost to NASA to get astronauts up to space currently is about $80 million a seat. Uh, with what we're calling commercial crew, having them do the astronauts for us, uh, that cost is coming down to an average of $58 million a ride for our astronauts, and it should be less now for private astronauts to join. But there will be empty seats that they can now sell to the private sector, so private research and other corporate ventures can, can go up to space. So when can I book my, book my ride? When is this gonna start? Uh, next year, honestly, the, the, the first astronauts you could see go up on a private scale uh, could be as early as 2020. So it's, it's starting right away. This is the first announcement. If you go to, NASDAQ's, uh, I'm sorry, to NASA's website, um, we have the, the listing of how it works and the opportunities up there. Uh, and people are already submitting to get it. So in one sense, some of the ventures are on a first-come, first-served basis, but um, this is a way for you could go. We'd love to have you, David. Yeah, I'd, love to, I'd love to go. But as I understand, the Russians uh, you know, are, are our partners up there. They've been commercializing this for some time. Why did we wait this long if the Russians actually, ironically, were the first ones to sell stuff? Well, a lot of it is we've needed the space right now to do our own research. We're doing so much in terms of research for growing food uh, and life support systems to get to Mars, which is, uh, it's much harder to go that distance. Uh, but right now we have some excess capacity and that's what we're now gonna, going to allow these commercial companies to use. So it just took us a while to get to where we have this capacity. But again, it's a way to, to use uh, American taxpayer dollars in a wise fashion to reduce the cost of, of doing what we do. How long will the space station still be up there? It must have a useful life. It does have a useful life. There's only so long the equipment can go. Um, and it's, it's being talked about right now when that is. We don't, we don't honestly know the, the end date of it right now, but we want to use it at its fullest capacity. Once we do this, once the private sector can see that they can make money uh, with revenue ventures up in space, there are also plans on the drawing board for private companies to put up their own mini versions of space stations uh, after ours is, isn't there. So uh, again, this could open up the entire low Earth orbit economy uh, and this is what we want to do, is help be that gateway to get them there. In success, how much of the cost that you have right now for the space station will be borne by private entities? We don't know right now. Again, this is the kickoff. We don't know how much is going to come in. We, we honestly, when we did this, we didn't know uh, how much interest would be there. Judging by the fact that there's been massive interest already and how many companies were here to see this and how many have talked to us, um, we actually think the number is going to be bigger than, than we initially projected. We're going to review the demand and, and supply every six months, and if the demand is great enough, we're going to even raise the prices. And so, um, such as right now, the amount NASA will get if you stay overnight is about $35,000 a night for life support, food, water, everything else. Um, if the demand is great, that cost will go up. Um, but uh, again, staying overnight there for $35,000 does not come with Hilton or Marriott points yet. <laughs> That's an idea. Frequent flyer miles would all serve to 